The Spinosaurids are easily the most intriguing groups of dinosaurs. They have everything that makes something easy to like. They're unique even among two-legged meat eaters. They are mysterious and hold the potential for so many interesting adaptations beyond the stereotypical carnivorous dinosaur. They've been known to science as Spinosaurs for about a hundred years or so, but their remains have been known for far longer. Thanks to convergent evolution, these dinosaurs have adapted similar characteristics to the crocodilians still with us today. A brand new study published mid-February 2022 found that a bunch of spare Spinosaur parts from Portugal actually represent a completely distinct animal that called the Iberian Peninsula home almost 124 million years ago. Meet the brand new Spinosaur, Iberospinus natarioi. Baryonyx was the first of the Spinosaur dinosaurs found that provided an in-depth look at what Spinosaurs really looked like. It was not the first found, but it was the first relatively complete one found. This find helped to get a better understanding of the biology of this group of dinosaurs and also defined the generalized body plan of those more fragmentary Spinosaurs known up until this time. For example, it is thanks to Baryonyx and later Suchomimus that the Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park 3 looks the way that it does. Now, Spinosaurus has been known for much longer, since the 1910s and the work of the intrepid Ernst Stromer. Unfortunately, those finds were extremely fragmentary, so the now outdated retrosaur configuration was used to fill in the gaps of the spined reptile. Despite this first dinosaur of the spined reptile lineage, it really wasn't the first to be found. It was only the first to be identified as dinosaurian. If we retrace our steps in paleontology history, we will be taken back to the inception of the dinosaur name. Gideon Mantell, a British paleontologist, interpreted the toothy remains of a large animal found by his wife in a nearby quarry as those of a large iguana-like animal. This was the beginning of the finds that would be used years later to define the Dinosauria. These were the remains of the hefty, spike-handed Iguanodon. These early paleontologists were actively trying to figure out how extinction worked, how the rock layers were laid down, how fossils formed, and what classifications these extinct animals belonged to. Dinosaurs weren't really a thing as there hadn't been a ton of research into those bits and pieces found before. Many were misidentified as other animals. Plus, English dinosaur remains aren't terribly common nor complete, even to this day. Instead of dinosaurs, these guys were describing huge mammals from the Ice Age, fish, and marine reptiles from the Mesozoic era. One of these non-dinosaurs would eventually turn out to actually belong to the fearsome reptiles. In the early 1820s, Mantell had acquired some fossil teeth that were found near Cuckfield in East Sussex. Two years later, Gideon finally got around to identifying the teeth as belonging to some form of crocodile. Two years after that, founding father of paleontology, Georges Cuvier, mentioned and illustrated these toothers in a paper. In 1827, Mantell found more of the same type of teeth, and then, in 1841, they were finally given a new scientific description by Dinosaur Man himself, Richard Owen. Owen named the teeth Crocodilus Succosaurus cultridens, as he believed them to belong to an extinct form of the modern crocodile. Some years later, Owen and other researchers would ditch the Crocodilus and opt for considering the animal its own unique genus. Sucosaurus cultridens. Then we move forward to the end of the 19th century to see French paleontologist, ichthyologist, and herpetologist Henri Emile Sauvage name a new species of Sucosaurus, Sucosaurus gerardi. Based on jaw fragments and teeth, he found eroding from a layer of rock in Portugal. It wasn't until the discovery and 1998 redescription of the relatively complete skeleton of Baryonyx that the bones of Sucosaurus were starting to make more sense. They weren't the bones of a crocodile, but the bones of a crocodile-like dinosaur, a Spinosaur. From the late 90s till the 2010s, various researchers have tried to put the Sucosaurus bones in a place that made sense. 
They most likely belong to Baryonyx, or the species Baryonyx walkeri. But since the Sucosaurus bones are so fragmentary and worn down, no one can make a definitive conclusion on them. Well, that was until the brand new description of an old 1999 specimen of Baryonyx Great Spinosaur found in Portugal by Carlos Notario. A 2011 study by Octavio Mateas, Ricardo Araujo, Carlos Natario, and Rui Castanina scooped up the remains of the Portuguese Sucosaurus, plus a then newly described bit of Portuguese Baryonyx, and found that they both represented a new range of the heavy clawed croc snouted beast of Britain. They redescribed all the old bones, plus the new ones, and concluded that they really should belong to Baryonyx walkeri extending its range into the Iberian Peninsula. 2017 saw publication of a study that used the Portuguese material, called ML1190. This study did some histological analyses on the bones to figure out how old the animal was when it died, and tried to collect data that may help better classify it. To study histology, you have to cut ultra-thin, microscope-safe chips of bone that fit onto a microscope slide. Then you look at them under the microscope and describe what you see. Hopefully, there's enough data there to infer or correlate certain things about the physiology of the individual at the time of death. This study was able to conclude that the animal was about 23 to 25 years old at death and that it reached sexual maturity at 13 to 15 years of age. ML-1190 was used in yet another study in 2019. This time, the specimen was placed in a matrix of characteristics to try again to figure out where it might place in the Spinosaur family tree, with a bunch of new data added in from new Spinosaur finds. This analysis concluded that ML-1190 was outside of the group that links Baryonyx to Suchomimus, meaning it is not only not Baryonyx, but belongs to its own group right outside the Baryonyx group. 2021 saw the use of ML-1190 in two more analyses of evolutionary connections. One found ML-1190 as some indeterminate Baryonyx relative, while the other found it grouped together with Baryonyx itself, but may or may not belong to the Baryonyx genus. So something funky is up with these bones. This is why I brought up the long backstory of these bones. It's all led up to a thorough redescription of the old bones sparked into print by discovery of some new bones that shows that Baryonyx was not present in Portugal during the early Cretaceous. Instead, a different relative called this place home. An excavation in June of 2020 saw the discovery of more Spinosaurid remains. This brings the grand total to part of the lower jaw, a bunch of teeth, part of the shoulder blade, the center of a back vertebra, two damaged back neural arches, four rib fragments, some bits of pelvis, a chunk of ankle, a bit of toe bone, and 15 tail vertebrae. The new research team, which includes Octavio Mateus and Dario Estraves Lopez, are confident all these materials belong to the same individual. Since they all come from one small dig site area, they all belong to an animal of the same size, and no duplicate bones were found. With these bones, the team gave it the new taxonomic designation of Iberospinus natarioi. The species name honors Carlos Natario, who found the first bones, and the genus name comes from the roots Ibero for the Iberian Peninsula and Spinus for spine. Not particularly creative, but we'll roll with it since it sounds neat. The remains of Iberospinus are pretty damn fragmentary, but still nowhere near as fragmentary as some other dinosaur fossils. Enough is here to give us the idea that this animal would have been roughly in the same size range as Baryonyx and may have looked somewhat similar, at least on a skeletal level. The tip of the lower jaw was placed inside a CT scanner to image the internal anatomy. Thanks to the completeness of this bone, both the internal neural network and the teeth were able to be seen. The neurovascular system ate a huge void into the lower jaw that split off into a network of tubes that provided blood and nutrients to the developing teeth underneath the old teeth already in the jaw. For more information on how neurovascular canals work in theropod jaws, watch my video on the recent work done on Sue the Tyrannosaurus. What is seen in this bone here in a Spinosaurid pretty much lines up perfectly with the canals seen in the jaws of Sue. 
I might speculate that perhaps the extreme pitting seen in spinosaurs, as opposed to a lesser amount of pitting in other theropods, may also correlate to a more complex neurovascular network connecting to the teeth of the jaw. The new paper made sure to conduct a new phylogenetic analysis to see what kind of spinosaur Iberospinus was. They concluded, like the 2019 study, that Iberospinus can be differentiated from Baryonyx and Suchomimus, but shows all the hallmarks of a Baryonychine spinosaurid. In other words, it was more like Baryonyx than it was like Spinosaurus. This now marks at least three Portuguese spinosaurs, Camariosaurus, Valibana venatrix, and now Iberospinus. Based on the known communities that included spinosaurs from around the world, this diversity in form is not unusual. Just in 2021, two spinosaurs were found to have possibly cohabituated with Baryonyx, Ceratosuchops and Riparovenator. Spinosaurus may or may not have lived with Sigilmastosaurus or some mystery spinosaurs. Then there's also Siamosaurus and Ichthyovenator in Asia, plus Oshalaya, Irritator, and possibly Engacharama in Brazil. Despite any similarities in overall anatomy between these animals, they were all able to avoid competition with one another by occupying different, as yet unknown, ecological niches. What this diversity cannot answer, however, is how these animals evolved. There are no known spinosaur remains from the Jurassic beyond the shadow of a doubt. The earliest known spinosaur remains are also extremely fragmentary and hard to identify. This new early Cretaceous Spinosaur from Portugal adds another data point to the pile of Spinosaurs from Europe, continuing to suggest that they may have first evolved here. That 30 million year gap until these early Cretaceous forms still leaves a lot of room for funky stuff to have occurred in the evolution of the Spinosaurs. So nothing can yet be said with full confidence based on the remains of Iberospinus alone. Perhaps someday, true, undoubtedly Spinosaur remains will be found in Jurassic deposits. I hope that it is one day proven that Spinosaurs made it to North America. I just think that would be neat. A Barrow Spinus merch is now available on the Edge Redbubble. Support my artist and I via links in the description and comment section below. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.